the force of attraction between the Earth and our object m, and we're just going to assume that it's got some mass m, some arbitrary mass, will then be g m1 m2 over r squared, where g 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared, times m1, the mass of the Earth, which we've already said, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, times the mass of the second object, which we're just going to call m. Now, I'm really sorry about this, but just be careful. Don't confuse this m, the mass of the object, with this m, which means meters, or that m for meters, and then divide it by the distance between them, r squared. And r, remember, is just going to be the radius of the Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, square. Now, let's divide that all out. What do we get? Well, let's look at the uh, units first. Notice we have meters squared and meters squared, so the meters squared cancels. We've got kilograms squared. Well, we've only got one factor of kilograms, so one of those kilograms will cancel. So we end up with, now remember that's the mass m, Newtons divided by a kilogram. What is a Newton? Remember, a Newton is a force. You might either remember how Newtons are defined or think mm, a Newton, that's a force, and a force is m times a, and a mass is a kilogram, an acceleration meters per second squared, so a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Divided by a kilogram leaves us with meters per second squared. So we have the units are going to be meters per second squared and then times m, the mass of our object, so times m. Multiply this all out, and what do you get? Well, you might be surprised, the value is 9.80. We have seen that before, 9.80 meters per second squared. What is that? That is little g. This is the mass m times little g. Very, very interesting. What does that tell us? What does that mean? Where, where, where is that coming from? Why is that equal to that? Well, let's just imagine that we have an object, and I'm, imagine you're not holding it, but you are allowing its motion to, to be influenced only by the force of gravity. So we allow gravity to be the only force acting on it. What's going to happen to it? Well, let's use the force and Newton's law, Newton's laws, to figure out what's it going to do. If we have an object and we allow gravity to be the only force acting on it, it falls down. Well, Let's imagine that the force acting on the object, we'll assume that we're talking about an object with a mass m. The gravitational attraction from the Earth has a magnitude of what we just found, m times g. Well, if that's the only force acting on an object, we know from Newton's second law, the force acting on it must be equal to its mass times acceleration. So we have that mg must equal ma, dividing by both sides Dividing both sides by m, we have the acceleration equals g. In other words, 9.80 meters per second squared. In other words, regardless of the object, it doesn't matter what the mass of it is. If you allow gravity to act on it so that they fall down, all objects Regardless of the mass, remember the mass cancelled out here, the acceleration is equal to g, regardless of what the mass is. All objects will fall with the same acceleration, 9.80 meters per second squared. But that is precisely Galileo's law of falling bodies. So, Newton's law of universal gravitation demonstrates why all objects on the Earth's surface, or near the Earth's surface, fall with the same acceleration. Because the force acting on them increases proportionally with the mass, but because the force equals m times a, when you divide off that mass, you get the same acceleration. So all objects near the Earth's surface fall with the same acceleration. 
Very, very good. What is this force? This force, the force of attraction that acts on all objects being pulled toward the center of the earth, that is the force that we call the weight. This force is the weight. An object's weight. We're going to use this over and over again, so we have a symbol that we will always use for the weight, and that is a capital letter W. We will see this again and again. That the weight of an object is equal to M times G. Here we get an understanding of what's the difference between weight and mass. Weight is a force. It's a force of gravity, a force of attraction, typically for us, the force of attraction to the Earth. The force that we experience being attracted to the Earth due to this force of gravitational attraction. So the weight of an object is a force, the force that is experienced from gravity. The mass of an object, remember, is just a measure of how much stuff something has. Now we can understand how these are very, very different. If I were to take this orange, well, <laughs> I couldn't really take this all the way out into outer space all by itself. Imagine you're in a rocket ship or something like that, and you take this into outer space. The mass of this object, how would the mass change? The mass would not change. The amount of stuff that's there is still the same amount of stuff here as it is the amount of stuff out in outer space. The mass of the object would not change. But what about the weight of the object? Well, the farther away from the Earth you are, assuming you get farther than five kilometers, if you're a million kilometers away, uh, yeah, five kilometers, five, 5,000 meters, if you're a million kilometers away or something like that, the the gravitational attraction will be much, much less. The weight of the object will be much, much less. So the weight of this object depends on where it is relative to the Earth, but the mass of the object does not. The measure of how much stuff is there is just a constant value. Sit mass here, same mass there, but the weight is a force, which is a measurement of the gravitational attraction between the Earth and the object, and that depends on how far away the object is from the Earth. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That is a, uh, a, a very good explanation of, or that's a good understanding now that we have between the difference of weight and mass. Excellent. What about some other forces? For this orange, remember, with a mass of 480 grams, or 0 0.480 kilograms, it has a weight of, weight equals mg, 0 0.480 kilograms, times g, 9.80 meters per second squared. That gives us a weight of 4.70 newtons. If I hold this stationary, what is the acceleration of the orange? Well, it's not moving, so the acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, what is the net force acting on the orange? If the acceleration is zero and F equals ma, the net force acting on the orange must be zero. There is a gravitational force, the weight, of, that's acting downwards on the orange of 4.70 newtons. So where's the other force that's balancing that? What's well, coming from my hand? In order to hold the orange stationary, I must push upward on the orange with a force of 4.70 newtons to balance the weight. So the weight is downward, my force is upward, they balance each other for a zero net force, and the orange remains stationary. This is true any time we have an object that's basically stationary on a surface. If I were to take this, and I've got a table here, we'll see my table in a minute. If I were to take this and put it down on a table, let me just draw this, so here's a table. And we put our orange on the table. What forces are acting on the orange? Well, we know weight is downward. We've got a weight here, downward. And in this case, we know the magnitude of the weight is 4.70 newtons. In this case, the table must be exerting a force on the, on the orange. The table exerts a force upward then of 4.70 newtons. 
this. This is going to be something that we'll see over and over again. When an object is resting on a surface, that surface exerts a force on the object in the upward direction perpendicular to the surface of the, uh, the perpendicular to the surface on which the object is resting. That force we will refer to as the normal force. Normal, in this case, is not the opposite of abnormal. Normal, in this case, has the mathematical sense of being perpendicular to something. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface on which the object is resting. We'll see later on, if you have an inclined surface, the normal force is still perpendicular to the incline. It's not necessarily straight up and down. If the surface is not horizontal, the normal force will not be vertical. The symbol that we'll use for normal force will be a capital F subscript N. So that's the normal force. You might think that the normal force is just equal to the weight, but that's not always the case. Often the normal force is equal to the weight for an object resting on a horizontal surface, but if the surface is inclined, it's not equal to the weight. And there's another situation. Just let me mention something here. Let's imagine we have a, uh, a surface, maybe a table or something, and I take some object, maybe uh, I've got a, a weight here. This thing has got a mass of 1.40 kilograms, which means it has a weight of 13.7 newtons. So let's imagine I take this object, and just like I did, I take it and I put it down on the table. Here it is. It's got a weight of 13.7 newtons. Now let's imagine that I come along and just, this is resting on the table, imagine. I come along and I, and I lean on it. I push on it. So I come over and I lean on this thing like that. So here I am. Okay, there's my hand, obviously. And I'm leaning on this thing and I push down on the object with another force. Let's say I push down with a force of two newtons. But the object is still not moving, it's not accelerating. What happens to the normal force? Well, the normal force has to balance both of these, so the normal force increases to now be the sum of these two forces. 13.7 plus 2, 15.7. So the normal force increases to whatever it needs to be in order to maintain the object as stationary on the surface. So if I come over and I lean on this thing with a force, you just imagine, say, say you're holding something and someone else comes along and pushes down on it. Well, if you want to keep it stationary, you have to push up harder. If I push down a little bit, I have to push up a little bit harder. If I push down more, I have to push up harder with my other hand. So the more somebody pushes down on the object, the more that force from below, the normal force, has to increase. Obviously, the normal force cannot just continue to increase uh, forever. If I were to push hard enough, I can't really, but just imagine, if I were to put, push hard enough so that the table could not make a normal force large enough, the table would break and the object would, would fall through the table. Uh, assuming that doesn't happen, the normal force will then increase to whatever value it needs to be in order to maintain the object as stationary. If nothing else is pushing on it, it will be the weight if the surface is horizontal. But if there is another force, the normal force increases. On the other hand, imagine this is on my hand and I take this hand and I pull up a little bit. I pull up with a little force, not, but, but still less than the weight. I don't need to apply as much force with this hand. I can decrease the amount of force that this hand exerts. So this normal force would then decrease. Let's imagine I come over here and I actually pull upwards with a force of two newtons. I pull up with that force. What happens to the normal force? Well, the normal force doesn't need to be as large as 13.7 anymore. It would actually decrease to 11.7. 11.7. Again, notice, what's the net force down? 13.7 down. 
What's the net force up? 2 plus 11.7, 13.7. So we've got 13.7 down, 13.7 up. Net force is zero. It doesn't accelerate. It has no uh, motion. Net, F net is zero, A is zero. So again, the normal force will just change its value to whatever it needs to be in order to keep the object stationary on the surface. Very, very good. Let's think about another force. 